Welcome back, everybody. Derek Sue, your 2022 Oakland mayoral candidate. Well, this is part two of Is Cheap Heat Possible? Well, I can, before I give you the results of uh, what happened here last night, let me uh, go over a few things here that uh, I did notice. Um, last night, once I, I lit the candle or the this uh, jar here, I had all four going, all four wicks going most of the night, but sometime uh, in the early morning, because the shortening, the vegetable shortening, uh, it actually liquefied for about nearly an inch and a quarter. And so what ended up happening, the one of the wicks could not remain standing or floating in that, uh, and it fell over, put the flame out. And, and so last night, the, the peak heat that I, I got was about 285 degrees on the top of this pot. And so I'm going to take this heater off, or uh, this thermometer off here. I'm going to show you the temperature that it is right now with just three flames, three small flames. I mean, the the wicks are, are falling into the shortening and, and extinguishing themselves, or uh, the amount that's sticking out is causing the flames to be very small. But before I open that up so you can see what's going on, here's the thermometer. Thermometer says about 200 degrees. That's what it is on the very top. It needs to be as hot as possible. And, and so uh, what we, we really want to see, and last night, it actually just started hitting where it says target, the orange area. So it actually reached the, the threshold of where uh, convection heating and cooling takes place because the heat goes to cold and, and so it's dispersed and, and um, I actually sat right here in my chair and uh, I could lightly feel the heat coming off of that pot last night but it was only for a very short distance it was about 12 to 16 inches at 16 inches I was just barely feeling but as I got closer I could feel it more and so that made a, a little bit of difference but in terms of uh, being a heating source not likely and, and so <clears throat> I'm going to show you that this is not that hot so I'm going to pick this up right here just like that so you can see I, I'm picking it up with my hands because the lower portion is not um, absorbing the heat and, and only the upper portion is absorbing the heat but look at look at the soot in there from the palm oil that's that's a lot of soot that got built up and so uh, if it's in there it's also on your ceiling on your surfaces because uh, I noticed it was coming out of the top of the hole and for a portion uh, it was leaking off the sides uh, when the heat got really built up in here last night. And so palm oil is uh, something that would cause the high amount of carbon that you're seeing in that pot. And that carbon also, once it gets built up, becomes an insulator. And so your heat transfer isn't as great uh, in the future. So. Uh, you have to constantly clean this out so that you don't get that insulating properties and that's why I'm able to hold uh, uh, on the top a 200 degree pot on the surface up here where it's the hottest but yet still hold this in my hand so it's creating an insulation it's uh, keeping the heat from actually getting into the terracotta and it's very cool down here and it, it's sitting, if you saw, just above the heat like that. And so <clears throat> the heat leaks out the top and the bottom, but it stays pretty cool. So anyway, uh, right now what's happened, I've got three candles still going here.
but yet I've used about three quarters of an inch of the shortening overnight and I was burning from nine o'clock uh, last night and to now and so it's used about three quarters of an inch of that palm oil and, and the uh, <sighs> but anyway here's here's one of the things that that we uh, kind of figured out uh, I saw this as a DIY I couldn't find any any uh, real results from folks other than saying that they were using this for a candle more than for a heating source because they were saying uh, the heat that comes off of this you know it could heat a small area and so a lot of people were under the impression maybe it could heat a tent or a small area like that well <clears throat> let's go over some of the thermal dynamics of heating and cooling and so the average room let's I'm going to use an example of one of my boats that I used to own I had heating and air conditioning in the cabin cabin was about 350 square feet and that took a 5,000 BTU uh, HVAC unit to uh, create the atmosphere that we wanted it had a thermostat inside we set the temperature at 68 degrees it, it didn't matter what the temperature was outside it would maintain that and that was a 5,000 BTU HVAC unit and so uh, in order to uh, that's 5,000 BTUs to to change and hold stable a certain temperature and that's uh, a lot of thermal dynamics in there because what you're doing is exchanging heat or heat for cool or cool for heat and, and so uh, the heat pump that I had inside the boat it was a reversible so if you ran it backwards it heated the room if you ran it forward it air conditioned the room and so anyway that was 5,000 BTUs well here's here's a problem with the math mathematics a typical uh, flame on a candle is between 65 to 85 uh, BTUs that's not much even when I had four of them and it peaks out it because it combines with four candles I had I figured out a little better than 350 BTUs well if you do the math 350 BTUs is very well short of 5,000 BTUs and so my expectation was that I'll probably feel some some uh, warmth off of this during uh, while it was running but it was going to be very limited because the overall area the coolness of the area would take a lot more because uh, with my propane heater that is a 28 thousand BTU oven and I run it on a, a low setting so again I'm right around five to six thousand BTUs where I'm I'm uh, running the, the uh, charbroil <coughs> excuse me and so that maintains uh, it brings the temperature up at night because last night got very chilly here in fact uh, the uh, temperatures dropped to 46 degrees in this location here last night and so this was not doing anything as far as being a, a great uh, night light this would be a good night light uh, with with this on top because you have very limited light coming out on both sides so it it dimly lit the inside of my shelter here so it, it worked as a lighting source but in terms of a heating source this is an epic failure because the numbers don't add up you need to reach a substantial amount of BTUs which this cannot do not one tub if you even if you put 10 tubs that's 3500 BTUs so you're getting close but then the amount of ash and carbon that you're going to get inside of uh, your tent or your your shelter is not going to be worthwhile especially over time uh, 
when you run it because that's the amount of carbon that was built up overnight. This is, I bought these terracotta pipes or pots together. This is a brand new one. This is how it went on last night. So anyway, uh, using one of these as a heating source is an epic failure. Don't bother wasting your money. Don't bother wasting your time. That is a failure. Uh, we're nowhere near the BTUs uh, in order to uh, keep one warm, even if you look at uh, the propane heating sources like uh, uh, Heat Buddy. Uh, that is, uh, at the very least, 3,500 BTUs for, for its low setting. So that tells you that's a that's a lot of heat brittle uh, the BTU standing for British thermal unit and how it's measured is how many of the BTUs it takes to heat w exactly one pound of water and, and so the more BTUs the quicker that the water heats up or the change is one degree because uh, the water has to change one degree and a certain amount of BTUs, that's one British thermal unit, to move the water temperature one degree. And so at 350, we're well short of the minimal threshold of 3,500 of, let's say, a heat buddy, and extremely short of 5,000 BTUs, uh, which is the typical need for any kind of space that's going to be about 100 square feet. And, and so, unless you need a, a long-term night light for many nights, this, don't bother. Thanks for joining me today. We'll be right back.